Hi guys, it's Sarah the Northwood Stitcher. Ooh, I got so much to show you. And I do want to say, I've been playing up here doing some framing and finishes, and I've been playing a uh, floss tube in the background. I just found the Nightly Stitcher. So Dina is her name, and she does Goodwills and Antique Finds. I'm so happy I found her. I subscribed and I figured out how to do it from my remote to the TV to subscribe that way. So I'm gonna go down the rabbit hole. It's very distracting. I thought I'd like put something on in the background so I could just listen while I'm doing something, but I need to sit down and watch. Today is Friday and I'm recording this almost a week before I'm gonna post it. So you're not gonna see this on the 18th. You'll see it after. Um, but I've just got so much going on, so I thought I better start recording now, and I've got things to show you. I went to the dump this morning, and I got something that was really cool. I should have done a before and after photo. It's a little glass dome. These are expensive. It was at the dump, and it had a straw doll in it. Corn husk. Uh, yeah, corn husk doll. And it was like molded and there was some fake moss on the bottom and it was glued shut and I was able to chip off the glue pry it open but look how clean I got it the hotter the water it just melted the glue off so this is almost brand new looking right now I'm going to use this I think to put some of my finds of like the luna moth I think I've shown you and some of the weird insects we'll see We'll see, we'll see. Goodwill, Goodwill. I went to Goodwill a couple times in the past week and I found some great things. I found a stack of books. I really need to get some reading done and start talking to you about some of these books I'm reading. But the, the prices were great because I got this for a dollar. I got a complete work of Emily Dickens, Dickinson. It's thick. It's probably a three inch thick book. I paid two dollars for it. I'm so excited. I found ready for this an acrylic lipstick holder and I love this it fits my sulkies I've wanted one but I didn't want to buy one because they were kind of pricey I found this at uh, a Goodwill for two dollars put it in the top rack of the dishwasher cleaned it up and I put most of my variegated variegated spools and some of my metallics. Now I'm gonna actually keep this downstairs. I have a new bookcase in my bedroom. When I get that completely organized, this is gonna go on top because I think this is a great morning, uh, good morning thing to look at and get motivated by. And then when I see something, uh, you know, that I want a variegated floss for, I can grab it right then and there. But it's just incredible. And I love how they jiggle like jello. They're not gonna fall out. But if you're interested and you do have some sulky flosses, these are great containers for them. And if you don't know what a sulky floss is, go to sulky.com. This is a cotton thread and it is a 12 weight cotton. One strand of sulky equals two strands of DMC floss. So they're just wonderful to stitch with. They do have a great little base. There's a line in the base where you can actually store the end of your floss without it coming unraveled. They do make cones as well. So you can get a white cone, a black cone for your DMC 310. And they do have conversion charts so if you want to get a cone of something equivalent to 3371, there is one. And the cones, the base of the cone pops open almost like a little suction cup. And then you can wrap the thread around it, pop it shut, and that'll hold your thread. So the cones don't unravel either. They have sales all the time. So if you haven't been to Sulky, S-U-L-K-Y, sulky.com, it's worth a trip down the rabbit hole. I have a whole bunch in a different storage container, but 
I, I really wanted these to come out and see the light of day so I can play with them. So that's a great find from my Goodwill. Where can I put this? I'll put this off to the side here. Just put it here. I finished my Not Forgotten Farm turkey. I think I'm going to call him Thomas. And I did have an opportunity to frame him. And I can't remember who it was. And you know who you are. But you were wonderful enough to remember that I had the metal um, keys that are for just accessorizing your stitches. Or maybe using at the end of a key fob. I got a little collection of them from Tamu, And I put them in my charm collection. So you commented that I should use one of those for this turkey because they had a black key that was stitched where I placed this metal key. This frame I got at a Goodwill and I think I would call this a type of plastic. Just tapping on it and looking at the back. It's made to look like wood and it's not. But I really like how this one came out. 1863 is the date for the Emancipation Proclamation. And I have a friend, Spools. Hi, Lori. She changed her year to the year of the first Thanksgiving. So this is a great opportunity to change up the date to signify something that's meaningful to you. And I really enjoyed stitching this. This was a great finish. But the little key I attached in four places around the handle and two places around the key barrel. I guess you would call that a barrel. And it's pretty, pretty tight on there. It's not going to go anywhere. And then this was just mounted on foam board. And I just used the regular finish. And then I added the wire because I'm not hanging it up on two nails. That's just too tricky. But just on the wire will be fine. So I'm really excited to get this done and have this in my fall collection so I can get him up this year. He was actually sitting around barely be, barely started, I think last two Thanksgivings, maybe one Thanksgiving, but I'm excited to get him done. That's Turkey by Not Forgotten Farm and you can still get him on their Etsy shop. He's handsome. So that was a good finish. And then some of you may remember I did a cross stitch from this collection. This is Words to Stitch By. And they are designs by Lori Markovic. Oh, there we go. And there's some really cute stitches in here. Now I decided to do this one on the cover. For whatever reason, it spoke to me and I wanted to change it. So it was my grandparents' initials and their wedding date at the bottom. And I found the perfect frame for it. You may remember I got this at a, a junk store and up and down the East Main. This was a dollar. It's very old, very fragile, and it swivels on its base but it, it was the perfect frame for it. I couldn't believe it. Probably a little crooked. I did the best I could and I'm okay with it. I'm really happy the way it came out. Unfortunately, when I started to frame this, I thought I had washed the frame. I didn't, so <laughs> it's a bit dirty. When I went to pop it in to test it, it left a mark on the top of the fabric, but it fit okay. And it's, I saved all the fabric that I stitched it on, just folded it over. And then I found a piece of the cross stitch itself is mounted on foam board with pins. And then I folded over the extra and then use some surgical tape. Now this is a fabric tape. This is really great to use when you're doing some framing. It's acid free, so it's safe for your cross stitches. But I cut a piece of matte board. This was extra matte board from framing things. And because it was a bit bulky, I decided to just attack it 
the mat board into the frame, which was very easy to do. And now I'll put on the back the information of the cross stitch. And those cool little tacks are actually upholstery tacks. I got this out of a dump find. I go to the dump right after like yard sales and stuff. So somebody was trying to sell this for 50 cents somewhere. And I grabbed these. So those are really cute little upholstery tacks. And I really love how this came out. You can't see the mat board from the front. It still didn't harm the weight of the frame. The only thing that I'm really concerned about is the age of this frame. It's so old. These little screws on the side are very elderly. They're rusted. I don't want to tighten them. I don't want to touch them. So I think I'll just leave it as is. Because the mechanism works, I'm not going to fool around with it. So that was a fun thing to finish. I'm also working on the Happy Spring Bird. This was a free chart from Heart and Hand. And I wanted to show you before I started to cut it up. If you remember, it was a tiny little stitch that I did. And you're looking at the back part right now. Because what I've done is I've stitched, well, to start, I stitched a bottom piece of fabric to the bottom of the cross stitch. And then I took an equal length of fabric for the back to cover the whole back. I placed them faces together, which really doesn't matter with this cloth or this fabric choice. And I have stitched all the way around completely. So it's inside out right now. So what I do now is I pull it apart and I'm going to cut a hole in what will be the back of the pillow. This will be a long pillow. So let me put this on pause. I'm gonna find the center or where I'm going to put the cover that will hide the hole once I make that. Let me put this on pause and I'll be right back. So I've started pulling it inside or right side out. There's a little hole that I made in the back. It's a pretty big hole. It's almost an inch by inch. And now I'm going to use whatever I can. Pencil. I have all kinds of tools in here. I'm using my finger right now just to poke out the ends or the edges and the corners. And now you can see that I have a pillow form. So let me get, I think I have some, I don't like the corners right now. Let me grab a, what do I have? A paintbrush. So now I'll use the end of a paintbrush. Look at that, really pokes out the corners very nicely. And I like to do it from the back of the pillow so I'm not distracted by the front and I can just see how it looks like from the back. It looks pretty good now that I flipped it around. So what I'll do next is I will stuff this. I will see if it's going to be top heavy. It'll probably need some weight here if I want to stand it up somehow. So I might add something heavier in the base of this. Like I have some wool threads, not wool threads, scraps of wool that are pretty heavy and I might stuff it in there. And then when it's done, I'm thinking maybe a cute little green or yellow gross green ribbon to go around the front and tie or go around it and tie in the front with a little bow so stay tuned for that I'll see how that looks i'm going to put this to the side right now because i wanted to show you some other things this is a little tricky this time for editing <laughs> I've got to go back and forth to see what's on my list on the phone. So I don't know how well this is going to work. <laughs> Before I forget, and I want to do a shout out to sisters out in Michigan. I have to somehow find a way to get out there someday and go shopping with this clan out there. So Karen's been emailing me lots of her finishes and goodies. Karen, Sarah out in Michigan. 
S-E-R-R-A, I think is the spelling. And she recently shared a finish that she got some, uh, she did an Easter finish and she got a wood form, I think it was like a pack of two, she said, from the Dollar Tree out there. And then she mounted this adorable stitch that she got from Stony Creek Collection in 1990 called Happy Easter. And I, I want to show it here, and show well, show it here so you guys can see it. It's absolutely wonderful. And she shared that with me, but then she also said, oh, went shopping with my sisters, we did really great, and told me and showed me these stitches that her sister, um, Sandra Clevin, yeah, Sandra Clevin found. So Sandra rescued two cross stitches out of a Goodwill. One was $2.99 and one was $1.99. And when you look at them, you think, eh, a bit old school. Look past that because what she did was she rescued them at those prices, took them apart, and I don't know if she's taken both apart. She took one apart and she has remade it into something beautiful. So I'm going to show what she's done here. And she took it apart and has given new life to it by fitting it now to the bottom of a basket and modernized the piece. It's just lovely. So I'm so excited to share those ideas and finishes with you. I can't thank them enough for taking the time to take the pictures, sit down, send an email with the attachments. I just get so excited seeing other people's finishes because it gets me motivated to stitch and finish some of my things somehow. <laughs> So thank you so much, you two. I'm really, really pleased and so happy and touched that you took the time to share those with me because now I get to share them with everybody else. And I think it's really motivating and everybody loves to see great ideas. So if you see old cross stitches and whether it be at a yard sale or a thrift store, think of some other way to use it. Or if you, you can't bring it home, Bring it to a stitch group, have somebody else give you some ideas. I have a couple of those in my stash that are still at my ankles or popped in a corner. I'll get to them and I'll give them a new lease on life and come up with some new ideas for them to make them a little more modern and happy. On that note, speaking of happy, I have finished my stuffing. So I've stuffed my little happy spring and I wanted to show you how nasty the back looks. It's nothing, right? It's a suture mark. So I cut it in two places. So I had that little X to flip this inside out and stuff it. Now I've unfurled as much as I could to stitch that nasty suture in place. Now I have things called dies that I use in paper uh, making for cards. And you roll this die with through a machine, a press with some paper on it to cut out the shape. So you can see where it's indented. So that little cutter has cut me a little felt shape. It will fit right over the suture mark. I'm simply going to glue it. I'm not going to do anything fancy. Before I glue it though, I'm going to go ahead and stick a little gourd pin in there with the date because I didn't stitch my initials and the date on here. So I think if I stick the pin in there, then glue it and let it set, it'll be fine. I also found some ribbon that I think I'm going to use. This is actually a gingham rather than a gross grain ribbon. But I think I think this will go in the front or come around to the front and I will somehow tie it off and put a bow there. So that's the idea. It's coming. Stay tuned. I have to go get my gourd pins now. I'd like to get this done and get on with something else in the pile that needs to be framed. I've gotten two done and I'm a little disappointed I haven't done more than that but it's coming, it's coming. 
I don't know. I need to get rubber bands up here. I've been using little pins to pin off the ribbon. I don't like the holes it makes in my ribbon, so I need to fix that. I'm done with my little paintbrush. I'm done with this. I'm done with this. So I'm going to go clean up my mess and then come back. I'll have a lot of editing to do on this one. Let's see, what else do I need to put away? I can put away my pins. No, I'll need those out to frame more things. Whew. Let's keep with it. Keep with it, Sarah. Hold on. Okay, I finished it. And I did find a little piece of yellow gross green ribbon. So it has been glued with my little 2024 charm. I made sure, excuse me, I made sure it was gonna lay properly before I put the glue on and it is still wet. And then I simply wrapped the ribbon around and tied it in a little bow. It's snug, but it's not glued down and I can take it off and change it out if I want to. And I'm not gonna be concerned about it because it's just gonna sit in a dough bowl or a tear tray. And I really love how it's finished. Now I saw this idea from a friend of mine named Karen who lives out in um, Oklahoma. And she did a long one, like just like this one. And I thought, oh, I love it. So that's why I did mine long. I was gonna go this way, but too often the pillows are too short if you have a tear with a lip on it, which I do and I want this to stand up somehow. So this is a really great idea. Thank you so much, Karen. So I'm done. I'm happy with it. Another little finish. I'm gonna go into the pile and get some more things out and I can put away the floss from this project because I did want to have the floss handy while I was working on this in case I decided to use a floss color in finishing. I wanted to show you something else that I got at a Goodwill. <laughs> Before I put it away, remember these? This was $2, I, I couldn't leave her there. And she's double-sided. I think this is a reproduction. I don't think this is originally an old toy, although it looks pretty it w looks well-loved, so maybe somebody did play with it a lot. But it was in beautiful shape, and I just love the retro look of it. I really imagine myself hanging this up near some of my framed Halloween stitches. I think it'll be cute as a extra accent when I'm decorating. And come to think of it, the pins in this, the metal that hold the joints together, I don't think you can see them but they're pretty rusted. So maybe this is an old piece. I don't know. I wish there was some way to date this. Maybe I'll look it up. I'll go down the hole sometime and try to figure it out. I also wanted to show you guys, I've started, remember the little strawberry realist kit? This one? So I really thought I should start this. This should be easy. <laughs> it's a lot of beads. So the flowers are beads. The whole berry is all beadwork, and the leaf on the berry is beadwork. The only thing stitched are the leaves. So here I go, <laughs> down the path of beading. It's coming out really well though. So I decided to do this on a 16 count opalescent, and I'm gonna, just gonna go back and forth, back and forth with the beadwork. That's why I did this flower already. And then when I finish with the berry, I'll go back and put the little veins in the leaves because I think there's a back stitch too of like a little curly that comes off the strawberry. So that'll be fun when this is done. And then I can keep it up here to frame it. There's something like six different colored beads in here. Something fell. I heard it. It might have been a needle. Let me go look. It was a needle. <sighs> Puppy comes up here sometimes. I do not want anything like that on the floor. Uh, needle minder? Yes, I need a needle minder. Somehow, 
I've got my needle minders stuck on the arm that's holding the camera. <laughs> so I will, there. Hopefully they won't go anywhere. I've got, that was the sewing needle. This is the, or the stitch needle. This is the beading needle attached. I'll put this away before I get myself into further trouble with this. I leave it up here and stitch on it when I need to. If I need to take a break from walking around the mouse, mouse trails around here. I've got to get some framing done and put some things away before I get haul this weekend. I'm going to a stitch group up at the Crafty Grimalkin and she's got all of her stuff from Nashville Market. So I wanted to talk about that. Um, I know there are a lot of people who are making huge lists and going out and buying everything they can right now. But I, I talked to a friend recently who got, who just seemed really stressed about it. And I just want to encourage people, don't panic. It'll be there and you can get it when you want to get it or can get it. You don't have to buy it all at once. Spread it out. Um, visit different sites, especially smaller uh, web designers, not designers, web stores. So make sure you spread the wealth. <laughs> And I'm also getting excited too for some upcoming retreats and some of the trunk shows that they're going to have and different displays that I can purchase things off of. But I just had to encourage this friend to write it down and make a list and just pick off things gently on your list. And if you can't find something, just ask around. Uh, you can call up different shops who may or may not have websites. Um, Though I'm, although here I think I'm pretty good in Maine, and we've got the crafty Grimalkin. I think I have her bag here. Well, I've got the crafty Grimalkin. She's got the store, a brick and mortar, but she also has a, a website that you can order from. And then there's also uh, the Lakeside Stitches up in Greenville, Maine. I know she was working on a website. I don't know if she's got it up and running, but she doesn't mind taking your phone calls about what she may or may not have if you can't find something that, you know, your shop may have run out of. Um, there's also um, the Daily Stitcher I have here too. Penny has a uh, website and she's super fast in shipping. And the Daily Stitcher, I think, I don't have a picture or card right now here handy. It's probably over there. Um, it's a little girl in a high school, uh, high chair and she's, you know, stitching or she's sitting in a chair and stitching. So the daily stitcher is another place to go. There's just lots of different places that you can hunt for some of these things that you may have trouble finding and it may be backlogged, uh, if you didn't pre-order and it's okay. Just don't panic. It'll, it'll come around again or soon, like black perforated paper that everybody wants to get. And I missed the opportunity. I think one, two, three stitch alerted me when they had it. I got the email a day late. It was gone. So I think probably the next time they get it is going to be May. I think that's what I heard. So I'll wait. It'll come around again. But I, I do like to wait especially with some of the things that are released with Nashville to see what people's ideas are for different colors, thread changes, different fabrics that they choose. I get really excited to see how people have come to their own creative influence in what that designer gave them to create with. So I'm not one that runs out and buys everything all at once. I didn't quite understand my friend's upset about it. So I think I hope I hope I calmed her down a bit because um, it's, it's gonna be there and we can get it. And if you can't, we have ways. We can find people who know where it is. There's places all across the country, different shops that we can get in touch with. And I've never called a shop where they haven't been helpful and just happy to look for you and take the time, even if they're just taking down your name and number and getting back to you. 
people are just so friendly in this population and group of creators. So it's, it's possible. Anything's possible, especially with a, a group of uh, brothers and sisters in the stitchy world. So don't worry. Um, also, I wanted to confess to you, <laughs> remember the little Christmas cross stitches that I did for cards? I just unburied them. Apparently they were on my table here. I found them. So that's gonna be on my agenda too, as long as well as framing things, looking to finish these cards, showing you how I do them, what kind of ideas I come up with. And I'm just sad too, because I really wanna do some uh, stamp work for Easter and it's coming up too quickly. And I think this is gonna be the holiday that I skip this year. I don't know how I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna to have to take a deep breath and be okay with it. But I got some really cute stamps. Where did I put those? Hold on, I gotta show you my stamps. So I recently went down to a stitch group in Auburn, Maine. We met at a Panera and there were, I think 13 or 12 of us and it was a great time really welcoming bunch of people. I had a fabulous time. After the stitch, I went further south to a place called The Willows, which is like an indoor flea market full of stuff. And for whatever reason, it was rubber stamp day for me, which I don't need, but always want. And I found some great prices, so I bought some stamps and I wanted to show them to you but I got some really great Easter stamps. So I was kind of hoping to make Easter cards, but I don't know how to pull it off unless I pull an all-nighter now. But this is a cute little inky antics. And what I like to do is I like to use a permanent black ink, which is a stays on ink. And then once it dries, I will take watercolor pencils. So it's really like coloring with a colored pencil, then you come back with a damp paintbrush and it looks like watercolor. It's like paint with water. Then I found a really cute, this is a PSX. This is a PSX stamp. And I don't know if I would color the whole thing. I'd probably do accents of browns and yellows and greens but it's a really sweet stamp. It's a little more complicated than the other one. And these are great for watercolor pencils. So this is a Hero Arts collection, set of three. I could make some really cute cards with those. And then this was a kit. This is an old kit from Stamping Up from 2007. It's called Bunny Hugs. I paid $3 for this little set. He's adorable. And I have little cotton balls this small for his bum. It'd be so much fun to put that on a card. Or the little chickies bouncing around. Easter wishes with lots of hugs and kisses. Kisses. I got this set, and I can't remember what it's called. Sweet and Simple Salutations. It's a 1999 Stampin' Up! set. It's missing one, which is the Graduation Collection. And you're not going to be able to see these very well. But I have a bunch of different holidays in here. Happy Holidays with a Snowman. Happy Valentine's Day with Candy Heart. Happy Mother's Day with a Jar of Flowers. For Baby with a Baby Carriage. Happy Father's Day with a dog holding slippers and a newspaper. A good luck for St. Patrick's Day, which is a horseshoe and shamrocks. For the two of you, two swans for an anniversary. And the other one that's missing is a graduation stamp, which I don't know if I'm gonna hunt for because when I looked for it on eBay, they wanted close to $8 just for the stamp and an additional six for shipping. I don't think I need it. I'd like to have complete sets, but it is what it is. Then this cute little block. This is by Stampendous. Unfortunately, I didn't look at it too closely. This was only $3. And it's supposed to have four stamps on it. Somebody's ripped off one. But it's got some really cute little designs. I have all but... 
I'm missing the snowman and the bunny. Is that focusing? I can't tell. There we go. So I'm missing that one. Oh, well. But these would be really cute, especially on some smaller cards or even some gift tags. So I'm putting these over on my area that I've been making cards, but I haven't in a while. I'm going to bring this downstairs. I'm going to go through my pile. Oh, I have to keep this wet side upright. I'm going to go through my pile, find something else to frame for you guys. What else did I want to show you? There's plenty of stuff around here if I look. So hold that thought. Okay, I'm back. I've been playing in the craft room. I found another thing I wanted to show you guys that I got at a Goodwill. And I've started a finish that's almost done. I'm just trying to give it a little more time to dry. And, oh, I forgot to get something. Hold on. Okay, take two. So I found a large collection of ornaments at a Goodwill and I have separated them. Some are round pine cones, some are glass and some are plastic. So I'm really excited about finding these. And when I found them, there were two massive bags of ornaments. One of the ornaments had some really cool non-ornaments used for decoration. I've separated them out and I found this really cool glass cylinder that I originally bought at another Goodwill to put my mercury glass balls in at Christmas. But I thought it would be really cool to put these in there and I think like every other rattan pieces. And they fit perfectly. How's that for weird? So check this out. Very foresty. Some of these look to be just styrofoam balls that have been wrapped with a jute and other forms of rope. Really cool. So, working in the craft room, I had purchased some boxes at Walmart. Look at that. And this was a box that's supposed to stand this way and it had, I don't know, something about Christmas snowman. I covered it with a piece of old blue jean material. And then I mounted the cross stitch on a foam board. And then I added a piece of chenille yarn on the inside. And I twisted a piece to make this a little thicker around the cross stitch. And now what I'll do, I think I'm going to take some of my, I think these are called pipe trees. I don't know what they're actually called. Bottle brush trees. I will put some trees, maybe two or three, on the inside of this and stand it upright somewhere. And I'm wondering, I've got a little deer too, but I think that'll distract from it. So I think I'll stick with the trees and maybe get a snowflake to go up here. But I love the standalone look and it's come out really cute. Now this is a cross stitch by the Twisted Threads called Winter Gingham. And I did this last year and I showed it. I also did a Thanksgiving day one that they had. I think it's called Thanksgiving Gingham. And I am working on that finish next because I think I have a another type of box decor. So on one side is a Halloween 
the other open side of the box, I think I'll mount the Thanksgiving Day one so I can just do a flip over when I change. I could still put something on the back of this. This still has the price tag. I got it for $2.50 at Walmart on the clearance. But isn't that going to be cute? <laughs> Let's hold it up right. <laughs> I think this is really cute the way it's come out. And I love that I had the blue jean to cut up and use. So, another finish. So that was three finishes. One, two, four finishes I've shown. And I'm pretty excited. Hopefully I'll just keep the ball rolling. It hasn't helped the crafter many. It's still blown up, but I have now put bottle brushes in a container and I'm getting a little more organized with things. This is ready to go downstairs. I'll do something with that. It's a nice decorative piece. Okay. I think I will say good night for now. I think I, I came across a couple of things I have some ideas for, but I don't want to show them yet until I decide. But next video, maybe I'll have some more. So until then, happy crafting, happy stitching. Be safe. Bye, guys.